on a storage device many files may be stored together so when we talk about allocation methods it refers to how the blocks of the secondary storage so in this case if we are considering a hard disk so how these disk blocks are allocated for the files and we want to do this allocation in such a manner that the storage space is utilized effectively and that the files can be accessed as quickly as possible in our previous video we saw the contiguous file allo the allocation method and we also saw the problems that were associated with contiguous allocation that we had to find a set of blocks which were consecutive or contiguous to each other and finding a, such a arrangement for a very large file it caused problem also it re resulted in external fragmentation when many small holes were formed so in this video we are going to take a look at another allocation method which is the linked allocation method so in the linked allocation each file is a linked list of blocks and these blocks may be scattered on the device so if we take a look at this figure and let's see that these are the blocks 0 to 27 let's say 28 blocks over here and if we have a file let's say Mia so now instead of providing a contiguous set of blocks to this file as was the case in contiguous allocation now the blocks may be allocated wherever they might be scattered on the disk so wherever these uh, blocks are available so wherever a free block is available that block can be given to the file depending upon the size of the file or depending upon its uh, demand. So here there is no restriction on having a contiguous set of blocks. Here the blocks may be scattered all over the device. In this scenario, there is a pointer to the next block. So each block will be containing a pointer to the next block. But these pointers, they are not made available to the user. They are access available to the file system only. They are not available to the user. So let's say if each block is 512 bytes in size and the pointer or the address of the next block, if it requires 4 bytes, so since this pointer is also being stored in that block, the user is actually seeing only a block of 508 bytes. So out of these 512 bytes, the pointer is utilizing 4 bytes. So what is uh, available to the user is only 508 bytes. In the directory, when the directory is storing the information about the file, so the directory is containing a pointer to the first and the last blocks of the file. So if in this case of Mia, we say that the directory is having this information that this file Mia the start block address is 10. So this is the first block of the file. This block would be containing a pointer to the next block which is 16. Block number 16 would be containing the pointer to the next block which is 2. Then 2 would be containing the pointer to block 11 which has been allocated to this file and 11 is containing the pointer to block number 25. As 25 is the last block which has been assigned to this file, the directory is also storing the address of this last block. So 26 has also been stored over there. So whenever a new file has to be created, there will be a new entry in the directory. So let's say now a file, let's call it foo a file foo has to be created so a new entry in the directory will be created foo and since it has not yet been written into so the start address would be null so null would say that the file has not been allocated space on the disk right now so each directory entry since it has a pointer to the first block of file so in this case when a new file is being created the pointer is initialized to null which is a kind of you can say that the end of list pointer value to signify an 
empty file and the size field will also be set to 0. So in case the size information is also being stored of for each file for foo the size is current the size is currently 0. As soon as the write to file happens it causes the management system to find a free block. So in this case a free block on the disk will be found by the file system. So let's say that free block that has been found is 21. So over here now this null will be replaced by 21 and this will point to this block over here. Also since currently the file has required only one block it is only it is not requiring more space. So in that case the end will also point to the same block. But now if the file, st file starts to grow so then another block will be found. So let's say the next block that has been found is 12. So this block 21 will now contain a pointer to the next block which is 12 and the end end information will now be referring to 12 and will be pointing to this last block of the file. So whenever the new file is a new block is found and is allocated to the file. So this new block is written to and is linked to the end of file. And whenever there is a read from the file, so the blocks can be read one by one by following the pointers which have been stored on each block. So the first block will be accessed, then it will be read, then the pointer to the next block will lead the uh, system to the next block. So in this way the blocks can be read from block to block. So in this case there is no external fragmentation because whenever a free block is available it can be used by any file to satisfy any new incoming request and so therefore there is no need for compaction of the disk space as was required in the contiguous allocation method. Also the size of the file need not be declared when the file is created because the file can continue to grow as long as free blocks are available. So in case of contiguous allocation we saw that if there is a size x of file so x blocks would be allocated to that file and in case this file has to grow then it would become an issue. Here in this case if the file wants to grow any free block that is available this or this any free block that is available can be now given to the file. So what are the disadvantages of linked allocation? Disadvantage is that it can be used effectively only for sequential access files. So if we want to go from one block to the next block and so on then it is okay we can use it for sequential access. But if we want to read a random access to the any particular block, so let's say in case we wanted to access the third block of Mia, then the information of the address of the third block is not available. We know the starting block, we know that 10 is the starting block, this is the first block, this has the information of the address of the next block. And now this next block has the information of the address of the third block. So random access that means having this address of the third block is not available. So this becomes a problem. So if we want to find the ith block of a file, we will have to start at the beginning of that file, follow the pointers until we get to the ith block. And now in this case, each access to a pointer. Now every time we are reading a block a pointer has been read and it is going to the next block. So this will require the next storage read and this may require a seek operation as well. The second disadvantage is the space that is required for the pointer. Now each pointer to the next block is utilizing some space. So let's say if a pointer requires 4 bytes then uh, in each block, so if the block is let's say 512 bytes, then that means 0.78% of the disk is being used for pointers. 
So as one possible solution is that rather than allocating blocks, what can be done is that blocks can be combined together. So we can have multiple blocks and this, these may, may be called clusters and rather than allocating blocks, we allocate clusters to the files. So now in this case, each cluster will have one pointer. So over here, let's say the cluster is of four blocks. So the starting address is 10. So 10, 11, 12, 14 uh, till 13. This will be the cluster. So the starting address is 10 and then 13 would be containing the address of the next cluster. So here, so let's say the next cluster is 18. So again four blocks. So in this case, rather than each block having a pointer address to the next block, only a cluster will have one address to the next cluster. So now the pointers will be using much smaller percentage of the file space and so fewer seeks will be required so it will improve the hard disk throughput. However, there is a chance of internal fragmentation increase because now even if the file requires two blocks of storage, four blocks will be allocated to it. Even if it requires three blocks of storage, Again, the cluster of flow blocks will be allocated, so more space will be wasted. So this compared to the block, if each individual block was being allocated, only a block would be partially full, but here the cluster would be partially full, so there is more increase in internal fragmentation. The third disadvantage is about reliability. We know that in this case, the files are linked together by pointers which are scattered all over the device. So each block of the file is holding the pointer to the next block. But what would happen if a block gets damaged, or the hard disk gets corrupted and so the pointer is lost or a bug in the operating system might result in picking up the wrong pointer. So one way of handling this is that we can use doubly linked list. So then each block has a pointer to the next block as well as the previous block. So even if a one block gets corrupted, there is a chance of retrieving the address as well. A variation of the linked allocation is the file allocation table. In this, a section of storage at the beginning of each volume that is set aside to contain this file allocation table and you might have heard of this FAT file system. This table has one entry for each block and it is indexed by the block number. So let's say that this is that file allocation table and it is having one entry for each block so 0 and so on till this end of the table and each block can be indexed by the block number. The directory entry will contain the block number of the first block of the file and then using that block number of the first block, we will index into the table by that block number and that block will contain the block number of the next block in the file. So let's see over here, we have a file which is test, its first block which is the start block is 217. So using this blocks, block number we will index into this FAT or the file allocation table. So 217 has this entry 618, that means the next block has address 618. So then we can go to the next address, 618 contains the entry 339 which refers to the address of the next block and if we go here we will find the address of the next block. So this chain will continue until it reaches the last block which has a special end of file value as table entry. So if this is the 339 is the last block then there will be some E of end of file 
symbol over here which will signify that this is the last block. If it is not the last block, then it will have the entry or the address of the next block. An unused block is indicated by a table value of 0. So whichever blocks are unused, they will have a table entry of 0 over here which indicates that that particular block is still not utilized. If we want to allocate a new block to a file, we will find the first zero valued table entry. That means that block is still available and it will we will replace the previous end of file value with the address of the new block. So let's say that earlier 339 was the last block which is denoted by end of file. Now let's say that file requires some extra block now. So we will look into the file allocation table and try to find that which is the block which is having a value 0. So if we search the table, let's say this was block number 23 which was having a value 0. That means this block is still available. So now we will put this value 23 over here and link this to this block and now 23 will have a value of end of file. So in this way the previous end of file value will be replaced with the address of the new block and 0 will be replaced with end of file value. Now the FAT allocation scheme can result in a significant number of head seeks because this file allocation table is on the disk. So every time we want to refer to the uh, next block of the file, we will have to go to the hard disk and do a seek to find out and access the file allocation table to find out which is the next block. So we have to cache the fat. That means we have to put a portion of the file allocation table into the cache of the system. So the disk head must move to the start of volume to read the FAT and find location of the block. Then we go to the location of the block and in both the cases they might require seeks. So it is important that the file allocation table, whatever part is most prominently being used, it is cached into the system. The benefit is that the random access time is improved because now the disk head can find location of any block by just reading the information in the FAT which has been put in the cache. So this was all about linked allocation for files.